Ah. Oh. Ah. It's working. I'm alive. I mean, I'm live and alive. <laughs> all right, ladies and gents, thank you all so much for coming. <clears throat> and welcome to Scotch and Smoke Rings 339. This is part four of In Sound Mind, and this is Scotch and Smoke Rings. I drink the scotch, I blow the smoke rings, you get to watch. That's the show. I came up with it myself. Uh, ladies and gents, we're going to have a great show for you tonight. I've got a new Fallout prop that uh, I, I can't wait to show off. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to continue with InSound Mind, which uh, is w we left off in a really interesting part. We were being pursued by a giant bull tractor demon. Yeah, uh, I think it was meant to symbolize rage. Yeah, very deep. Uh, but um, we were having a lot of fun with that. But before we get any further, I'm going to have to change my scotch and smoke rings schedule a little bit. Because I've come to realize that the biggest monkey wrench in my week is scotch and smoke rings. Because I, um, I stay up really, 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 really late doing this broadcast. And that means that it, it, it's hard for me to make it to my Friday broadcast, and it kind of throws off my week. Nick Barnhouse says, Evening, Ox. Finally got my gold derby. Congratulations, Nick Barnhouse. That's amazing. Kudos to you, my friend, and thank you so much. Uh, so, the here's the gist. The gist is I need to make scotch and smoke rings a bit shorter starting this week instead of Four hours with three hours of gameplay. I'm going to do a three-hour broadcast with two hours of gameplay. And next week, I'm finally, after almost a year, I'm, I'm going to be able to get back to my regular schedule of going live at 7 o'clock, right? That means that I get to bed at a reasonable hour, 7, 8, 9, 10. I can go to bed at around 10 o'clock. Gives me plenty of sleep for the next day. I can make my Friday broadcast, right? So that's, that's really it. That's the only change. Um... Still, the regular scotch and smoke rings are used to, just a little bit shorter and a little earlier in the day. Good to see everybody on Facebook today. Corey, Chris, Matthew, Ryan with the first stars of the broadcast. Hello, Wax. He says, hello, Matthew. Roman, Jake Benz with a donation of stars. Happy Thursday slash Friday. Once again, Ox and all in chat. Thank you, Jake Benz. Happy Thursday slash Friday to you. Matthew Ryan says, the wife is asleep, but I am up and able to watch us down here in East Texas. Want to give you your weather back. <laughs> I take it you've got some rain in Texas right now there, Matthew. You can keep it. Seriously. Um... Since the snow all melted here in the Pacific Northwest, it has been nonstop rain. In fact, I think it's even raining right now. But uh, uh, thank you very much, Matthew. And it's, of course, always wonderful to see all of the regulars, members, and Patreon subscribers on YouTube today. Mark from Sales, the first person in the chat today. Hey there, Mark. Sarah, Automatic Beats, Justin Rice, Julian Z with a Gold Derby, Edward J, Ranker1138, Chittinator with a Gold Derby, Burial Account, Ian Chamberlain, Rachel with a gold derby, Adress, Craig Euler, 200 Angel with a gold derby, Tony J, Weird Beard with a gold derby, Mr. Virus Jersey, Quintius with a gold derby, Antonio, Rebel She Wolf, No Name with a gold derby, Nick Barnhouse, of course, with his gold derby. Congratulations to you on acquiring that Nick Barnhouse, and Carolina Nava with the first super chat of the broadcast. Can't stay. But can donate, she says. Thank you very much, Carolina, so much for your contribution. DS says, Ox, few sips ahead of you, but you're on, so I stay up. Thank you, DS. I'll catch up. Don't worry. No Name says, what do you get when you cross a polar bear with a seal? A polar bear. Right. I think we all saw that uh, mental image. 
We, we were able to play that one back in our imaginations. Cannabis Yours says, uh, I actually made it on time tonight. Looking forward to seeing what happens as the game goes on. Thanks always for the great shows. Thank you, Cannabis Your, and you're welcome. I'll be here for as long as I possibly can. Julian Z says, Hi, Ox. So good to see, uh, to see you. Hope you're doing well. Looking forward to In Sound Mind. In this week's lore video, does it look like you will be able to play Sherlock tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I think I can do it. I'm a bit sleep deprived right now, but I managed to knock out my lore video uh, almost uh, totally today. So I don't have a lot of editing to do tomorrow, which means I can dedicate most of my time to the broadcast. So I'm not sure what time I'll go live, but I think I will still be able to do Sherlock Holmes tomorrow. Julian Z says, oh my God, Ox, so glad to hear the news of Scotch and Smoke Rings returning to the old time. Can't wait. Uh, makes the shorter streams worth it. Thanks for what you do. Thank you, Julian Z. Yeah, I've been looking forward to going back to uh, my seven o'clock schedule of Scotch and Smoke Rings. Uh, but uh, we, we made it work, you know, for the past year or so. We, we made the later broadcast time work, but it's good to be getting back to, you know, a reasonable hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. No Name says that uh, the racing snail that got rid of his shell, he thought it would make him faster, but it just made him sluggish. Thank you for that one, No Name. Oh, I'm so happy. You're just tickling my funny bone here. Lumen says, sorry for not dropping by lately. Business has been tough. No worries. It's a tough time for many businesses all around the world right now. So I understand. You take care of you and yours first and come on by when you're all settled. Dan Aldridge on Facebook says, I'm sure you've heard this before, but longtime watcher of your vids and first time watching a live stream. I have heard that a lot and I'm so grateful that people who are exposed to my lore videos are still, even to this day, discovering my live broadcasts for the very first time. I hope to be broadcasting live here on YouTube and Facebook for the foreseeable future. Jason Fisher says, Good evening, Oxhorn. Doing my first playthrough of Fallout 76 and doing the Mysteries line of quests and can honestly say, they suck, lol. Well, to each his own, but um, <laughs> honestly, the, the Mistress of Mystery... <clears throat> mystery? Uh, it's one of the most interesting quest lines in the game. So if you think that sucks, I mean, that's kind of like the best the game has to offer in my personal opinion. There's a reason that I covered the Mistress of Mystery quest line first as a lore series on my channel. And that's because it was kind of the best that 76 had. I mean, the primary plot is, it's okay. You know, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, many of the side plots are, you know, they're all right. Uh, I mean, everything's dead. We all we already know that. There's no surprises when we start the game. We already realize that absolutely everyone is dead. So, I mean, until Wastelanders came out, every quest was just dealing with ghosts and dead people. So aside from that spoiler, which wasn't really a spoiler, <clears throat> um, yeah, the Mistress of Mystery questline was interesting. It, 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 um, I liked it, actually. So if you thought it sucked, um, I don't know if you're going to like the rest of the game. Anywho, uh, I've got lots of lore from 76 up on my channel, so if you want a sneak peek before you dive into it, you're welcome to check all of that out. Jake Benz says, Luckily, your friendly live stream doc is always popping in on Scotch and Smoke Rings. And, of course, you are, Jake, and that does make us all lucky. He says, I'm up and ready to go tonight with a fresh box of Cubans and plenty of Kraken rum. You and me both, I've got my Kraken rum and coke. Uh, I've got the, uh, Ardbeg? No, not Ardbeg. Ab Aldeberg? No, not Aldeberg. What is it again? Hold on. I gotta get this. I've got it saved. Just for this situation, because I have a horrible time remembering the name of this dog on Scotch. I know it starts with an A. It's, uh, it's, it starts with an A. I have it saved here. Some art. No, it's not art. Big. Apple. No. Where is it? 
I've got it. No, I can't find it. Well, I thought I had it saved. So yeah, it starts with an A. It's really good. It's not R to beg. It's something else. What's a scotch that starts with an A? Yeah, I'm going to stop looking now because this is really embarrassing. I, I had it saved right here for this very moment, and now I can't find it. Anyway. Anyway, scotch. I should probably drink it. Cheers. Eli Shepard on Facebook with a donation of stars. Very generous. Thank you, Eli Shepard. Jake Benz says, if there's any mods in chat tonight, I am not a sponsor yet. <laughs> Jake Benz patented lab coats available for sale now on the Oxhorn channel. Jessica Sharp says, I'm glad that I'm so much better after getting over FEV. I have been busy working on t-shirt designs and updating my gaming branding. I'm glad that I finally made it to your stream. You know, Jessica, I'm so thrilled and just absolutely tickled to hear that you're keeping on uh, trucking with your channel and now with your merchandising and you're feeling better. That's such a wonderful thing to hear. Thanks for stopping by to let me know that you're, you're, that you're keeping on going. Thank you so much. Uh, Matthew says, you missed my chats, Ox Lols. Sorry, J Matthew, let me scroll back up. Uh, he says, uh, rain slash sleet down here right now. We freely give it back, lol. You know, we do get rain a lot, but honestly, not a lot of sleet. Not a lot of sleet. Alt Grendel says, H hello, Ox and chat. Hope all is well with everyone. Thank you, Alt Grendel. Good to see you. Abelur, Edward J. Abelur, yes. A Ab how did? Why is that so hard for me? I can't even remember. I, I, there, I've got certain mental blocks. I can never remember the name of the game that I'm gonna play tonight. In sound mind, I know it now because I just had to make the thumbnail for it. But when I'm talking about my upcoming broadcast, I can never remember the name of this game. And then I sit down to talk about the scotch I'm drinking, and I can never remember the name of it. Abalur. Thank you, Edward J. Anna Pitzer says, Hi, Ox. Haven't made it to a stream in a while. I just picked up some Sexton whiskey. Actually, not too bad if you haven't tried it. Sexton whiskey sounds delicious. I'll have to add it to my list. Joey Widmer says, uh, or Widmer says, Hi, Ox. I had a cigar question. If I have a cigar, and it goes out, and I see save it, how long will it last? Not long. <clears throat> a rule of cigars is once it goes out, unless it's been out for like a few seconds, it's toast. Uh, so the basic rule is like if you leave your office and your cigar is smoldering and you're, you're gone for like an hour and you come back, it's best to chuck it. Now, I never do. I still light them up and smoke them because I can't throw away things. I've got a problem, and I realize it. I'm kind of a pack rat. Have you seen my office? It's like, yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't bear the thought that I spent money on this. Like, this is a cigar that I started smoking earlier in the day, right? This is the new one that I cut for the show. But this is the cigar that I started smoking earlier in the day. I should throw it away because the I've already set it on fire, and having left it alone, the tar has... Uh, the tar that melted when I set it on fire, fire has started to solidify and it's gotten acidy. So now this is going to give me tongue bite. It's going to sting my tongue a little bit when I smoke it. But the, the part of me that can't bear the thought that I actually spent money on this won't allow me to throw it away. It's telling the other part of me that I will enjoy it, doggone it. And if I don't enjoy it, then there's something wrong with me. I'm going to just sit there and live through the tongue bite because I paid money for it. And doggone it, I'm going to get pleasure from this cigar. So, yeah, you should throw yours away. Don't be like me. I am, I'm, not, I'm not doing this the right way. I'm not your role, role model when it comes to cigars. Like, you need to find someone else for that. <clears throat> But basically, if uh, if you set it down for a little bit and it goes out, you know, for a few minutes, you should be able to relight it and it's okay. But an hour, yeah, check it. Chininator. Pardon me, says, Ox, I'm already six beers down for the night. Tonight's drinking game is about to be interesting for me. Oh, dear. Well, uh, hopefully I won't die. Thankfully, this isn't a game I do a lot of dying in. Hey, 
Jake Benz <laughs> says, I'll take two coats with the vault -Tec logo on a mox, lol. <laughs> uh, you know, they, they would probably sell those if they put them in the Bethesda shop. Jared says, uh, with a donation of stars, sorry I'm late. Can you please give me a quick sit rap, sit rap of what I missed? <clears throat> we haven't missed much. We did the intro. You know, we've been live for a few minutes, really. 15 minutes? Okay, we've been live for 15 minutes. Um, I've just been, you know, chit-chatting with the, with the crew. Basically, all you missed is that I said that I'm changing my scotch and smoke rings hours. So I guess that's kind of a big update. Yeah, we're going back to the 7 o'clock schedule, and it's going to be a 3-hour show instead of a 4-hour show. That's about it. Ah, oh, man, this is stinging the tongue. But doggone it, I like it. Oh, I just, I just love that burn. Elena Sherwood on Facebook says, Greetings, Ox. Believe me, one day I'll be able to send stars. For now, though, our bank just won't have it. You're amazing. Well, thank you very much, Elena. I'm just so grateful that you're such a frequent viewer and you come to all my broadcasts. Matt Rowland says, Ox, I'm replaying Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but I'm playing as Alexios. Cassandra as Demos is weird. I don't know if I could keep this up. I'd imagine that would be really weird. And Jake Benz on Facebook says, And no, folks, there's no evidence of me having stim packs to sell yet. Lol. If you want stim packs, just go to Etsy. I've got m all my stim packs that I've got on my shelf. I bought them on Etsy. Wonderful creators on Etsy who are making practically every chem imaginable. Joe, Joey Widmer, or Widmer on um, YouTube says, I just recently got into cigars after my uncle gave me one of his, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, uh, I got into pipe tobacco, smoking uh, tobacco pipes. Because I was gifted a tobacco pipe <clears throat> of my grandfather's. And it was from that that I ventured into cigars. Because they were just a little bit easier to smoke, in my opinion. Rachel says, my cloning experiments have paid off. I'm so excited. I'm beside myself. See what you did there. David Hoffman says, I know Borderlands graphics are a little odd. You get used to it, and the jokes and lore are worth it, so please make it your next Monday series. Maybe I do get Borderlands requested quite often on the program. Mark from Sales says, Today I ordered a chicken and an egg online. I'll let you know. What came first, the chicken or the egg? He'll let us know. All right, well, don't leave me hanging there, Mark. Which one comes first? I'm curious. Vince M says, Good evening, Ox. Finally decided to go back to school. Starting February 28th for game design, your vids helped inspire me to go back. Thank you, Vince. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on taking the leap to get back into uh, into something you're passionate about. I mean, that's the key to, to, to work-life happiness. Do something you're, that you actually genuinely enjoy. I mean, they, do, they also say don't turn your hobbies into a job because then, well, your hobbies become work. And that's kind of what happened to me. <laughs> but for some reason, I still love it. And I, I, I'm not getting bored with it. And I, and I love coming to work every day. And so for people in game design, I can imagine, they just absolutely love coming to work every single day. So congratulations, Vince. I wish you the best of luck in game design. Let us know how your education goes for uh, moving forward. Kyle Warfield on uh, Facebook says, I am on East Coast time, and I'm very glad you're going back to the original schedule. Lately, I can never finish a stream because i am got to get my kid off to school in the morning. Yeah, I don't blame you. You know, children and life first. You've got your priorities. Uh, but yeah, I should be able to get back to my regular schedule soon. TSW555 says, it's ox time. Keisha uh, uh, and have pasta, and I have pasta tonight, and are so ready to sit down, watch you definitely not die. You got this. We believe in you. Love you, Ox. Thank you, TSW and Keisha, uh, the cutest couple ever on my on my show. Um, I'm 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 glad you guys are still watching. Enjoy your pasta tonight. Limbox says, uh, "Sorry, I'm late. What was tongue blight again? I, it's tongue bite. Tongue bite. You can Google it. It's not blight. It's tongue bite. But basically, if you're smoking your." Cigar or your tobacco pipe too hot. Like if you're just. You're really sucking on it. 
You singe the tobacco to the point where you're starting to boil the tar and the juices that naturally form while you're smoking. Whereas if you smoke it slowly, then you don't boil it all. It allows it to you know, burn off as steam and you get a nice, cool, even smoke. If you smoke it too hot, the it forms this acid in the smoke that kind of singes your tongue. It doesn't really burn it. It just kind of feels like it's been singed. And it's called tongue bite. Now that also happens if you let your cigar go out. It allows the tars and nicotines and stuff to sort of solidify. And then when you relight them, you're instantly, you know, singeing them because they formed a solid already instead of, you know, the oils have already come out of the leaves. Like, I don't know all the science behind it, but don't let it sit because the tars will fire up and instantly give you a tongue bite is basically what I'm saying. Andres Guzman says, hey there, Ox, huge fan from Colombia. Love your work on Fallout and your playthrough of Disco Elysium. Could you check uh, Stasis for Scotch and Smoke Rings? It's by a studio called Brotherhood. Thank you for all this uh, time. Stasis. Gang. Looks interesting. So it's an isometric game like Disco Elysium and uh, the original Fallouts, but it does look interesting. Might have to add it to the list. Thank you for that one. Andres, Alt Grendel says, since we are on the subject of cigars, have you ever used a cigar holder to smoke a cigar? No. I have not. I have no need. I have fingers. I suppose it's worth doing at least once in my life. Schlatt, uh, Slatty Bartfest <clears throat> with a gold derby says, um, and a member for 36 months, awesome Slatty Bartfest, says, when I worked in the office, people used to laugh at my jokes in meetings. Since doing meetings from home, people have stopped laughing at them. I asked why and was told my jokes weren't remotely funny. Only funny in person. They're not remotely funny. Oh, I like that one. Thank you, Slatty Bartfest. Jake Ben says, tonight's stream is brought to you by Shane Kow Kowalowski's Clean Water Market Straight from the Filter. Right, Shane from Fallout 4, Diamond City. Jared Shover says, same here, I'm on the East Coast too. And Matthew Ryan says, did me and Jocelyn lose our title of cutest couple because she's asleep? I'm shocked and hurt, lol. No, no, no. I mean, you're definitely a cute couple, guys. I mean... Both have have the same job, and and you're a brony. I mean, there's just so many cute things about about you guys as a couple. No, you're you're both equally cute, right? TSW and K uh, and Kayla and and uh, the Ryans. They're all just so amazingly cute. All right, how that? Uh, how about this? Every couple watching right now is the cutest couple on the broadcast. Can I say that? I can. I just did. Jake Ben says also I in breaking. Breaking news, a local package courier found shot in the head near Good Springs has made a full recovery. Now that's a service you can count on, folks. Thank you for that bit of breaking news, Jake Benz. And D.L. Stone with a donation of stars says, Love your Brotherhood of Steel lore vids you're doing for Fallout 76. They're my favorite faction. I'd never be a fan of, Fallout, of a Fallout series if it weren't for your videos. Currently watching your previous videos on the first two Fallout games. Thank you, D.L. Stone. Uh, I'm grateful that you're going through all of the original lo lore for the Fallout series. It's going to give you a better appreciation for the Bethesda Fallouts that came later. Jersey says, uh, Ox, check out what Tony J asked you earlier. Okay, Tony J, Tony J. Uh, line from Borderlands says, Tony J, blast that train car with your butt sink. Hmm. Well, I'm so glad I scrolled up for that. Thank you, guys. Oh, or uh, so I don't know. Like, well, Tony's asking a lot of questions. He says, Ox, are you going to do the hobo trick of putting the cigar on a toothpick to smoke the whole thing? <laughs> I have actually done that on camera before, but it's been a while. And then he says, Oxhorn, how would you like the idea of a quest with a ghoul, James Bond and Fallout? That was the CIA or MI6 in 2077 and was still on a mission 200 years later. I mean, that's kind of like, um, 
what we got in Vault 51. <clears throat> For Wastelanders, at the end of Wastelanders, we find the Secret Service alive after 25 years or so. But I see what you're saying. Um, but who would <clears throat> see uh, 007 re reported to the government, to the Queen? Who would this uh, 007-esque type person report to? Because the government's gone. Edward J. says, what did the police officer say to his belly button? You're under a vest. That joke works equally well for nipples. Factoid. Mr. Virus says, sounds like you got a hoarding problem. Wink to... Wink to the second. Two winks. Maybe. Maybe. When it comes to Fallout props, I definitely have a hoarding problem. Ranker says, did you realize that 10 plus 10 is the same as 11 plus 11? Well, they're both addition problems. Okay, is this... Is this like a really difficult joke that I just don't get? 10 plus 10 is 20. 11 plus 11 is 22. Did you realize that 20 is the same as 22? Why am I not getting this joke? It's probably really, really easy. Did you realize that 10 plus 10 is the same as 11 plus 11? No! They're different equations! Oh my god. At this point, I would just like to retire. <clears throat> I'm not fit for service anymore, apparently. I've been doing this too long, and I just can't do it anymore. 11 plus 11 is 22. Oh, why do you got to do this to me, guys? Come on. Why? Just, just don't give me math this late at night, please. Just give me a break. Have pity. Have pity on your oxhorn, guys. Yes, I get it now. I see everybody giving me the answer in the chat. I figured it out. I got it. It's, it just took me a while, all right? Ah. Oh. <laughs> Have mercy. Uh, Matthew Ryan says, uh, as for the same job, only thing even close for us having the same job is that we deliver things. She works harder, I see. Well, uh, you, <clears throat> it sounds like whatever the two of you do, you both do it. Well, Daniel Radley says, Evening Onks, hope you and everyone is doing well. And here's my joke for the evening. How do computers get drunk? They take screenshots. Screenshots. I love it there, Daniel. Jake Ben says, The leader of the Kings, who would only identi identify himself as the King, voiced his displeasure, calling NCR citizens, quote, The devil in disguise. They're the devil in disguise. Oh, yes, they are. He added he didn't want to see the NCR in the ghetto and called for a mass, quote, return to sender. Return to sender. Thank you, Jake. Well, the chat really liked that math joke. Well done. Well done. TSW555 says, I'm sorry, Oxlol. I didn't mean to force you into a witch child. You love more situation. <laughs> you are all equally loved and are cute. Uh, end quote. Such a savvy diplomatic response. Ox, you deserve a medal. Thank, thank you. That's, that's how I get by. I've, I've lasted this long for being diplomatic like that. No Name says, statistician, a person who draws a mathematically precise line from an unwarranted assumption to a foregone conclusion. I actually know professional statisticians who probably agree with that while also being butthurt about it. No Name says, did you hear about the statistician who drowned while crossing a river? It was three feet deep on average. On average. It's that one section that was 10 feet, and that's, that's what got him. Jake Ben says, I'm filling the chat with all things Fallout tonight, Ox. Lol. And we all love it. 22. Ugh. 
Gwendolyn says, now that you have the addition warm-up done, <clears throat> are you ready for some differential equations and calculating logarithms by hand? No. How about we not do that? Anything else, please? But that. Kellen Gray says, <clears throat> moseyed on over to tell you howdy and you're awesome. Kellen, howdy back and you're awesome. Thank you. Matthew Bryan on Facebook says, if we're going to keep the Borderlands quotes up, so loud, so angry, so dead. And I'm sure I'll understand exactly what that means when I play Borderlands. Right. So, props. I've got one new prop to show off. <clears throat> It came in a, a few parts. The first part of the prop is this. I didn't get it because of this, but it came with it. Yeah, I know you can't tell what it is, but it's like a, a car a cling film thing. It says more ferocious than a death claw, and it's got a cute little death claw on there being all ferocious. Yeah, I realize you can't see it at all. It's just, it's just white. But yeah, that's that. Then I got this. Oh, man. I had it right here, but then I took it out so I could easily find it. And of course, that just made it harder. Here it is. <clears throat> New California Republic belt buckle. Isn't that cool? If I wore belts, I would wear this belt buckle every day. They need to come out with New California Republic suspenders. That would actually help me. Then, you're going to like this. That's right, that's the NCR Veteran Helm. I finally got one. Uh, they popped back up on the Bethesda store, and I quickly got one as soon as I can. In fact, I don't think they're sold out, so I think you can probably go get one. But there is one thing that I'd like you to notice. Head? Whatever the hell this is. Head? Super Mutant Head? Giant Head? This is huge! This is oversized. It's comically oversized. Like, like, look, that's that's my other NCR Ranger helmet, right? That's the one that I had made on Etsy for me. And, you know, that's the size a helmet should be. It's modeled after a World War II era or Vietnam War era helmet, as was the riot helmet from this. And, it, you know, it fits my head. It's a normal-sized helmet. This, are we filming Spaceballs? What is this? I mean, it's cool, but look at this. It's, it's I feel like Lord Helmet. Hold on. Maximum speed. Sir, we've gone to plaid. Like, I mean... Am I alone here? I'll show you this one thing that's really cool. Oh, yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. Got the glowing red eyes. I love that. But, come on. I mean... It's comically huge. Just ridiculously oversized. Now, I know that they got to make this for everybody, right? They, they, there's a wide variety of people with a, a variety of head sizes that need to be able to put this on. So they've kind of got to make a one size fit all. And the safest way to do that is just to make it huge so that it fits small heads, kind of, and big heads. But I've got a normal sized head. In fact, I might even have a slightly larger than normal sized head. It's not small, but it's not huge. But this thing sits on my head like, I don't even know. I feel like I'm wearing a bubble on top of me. It feels like a Halloween costume. I mean, it's just, look at that. I feel like I want to ask some guys to go comb the desert with a literal comb. It's, it's. But, you know, it's, I like, I'm glad I have it. It's, I'm glad I have it. It's got great detail there. I mean, the antenna is a little shorter than I would like, but maybe it's collapsed. And it doesn't have any of the, uh, the pipes, uh, the tubes that the gas mask is supposed to have. So it's not a 
a perfect replica, but it, it's nice. You know, I, I like it. It's just big. It's really, really big. It's a big helmet. So there you go. Mila444 says, can you breathe? I mean, yes, I can breathe in it. It's, it's, it, it's not constricting my airway. I don't feel like I'm in danger when I have it on. But I also don't feel like a human when I have it on. Sagacity says, bobblehead ox, new shop idea. That's exactly what I feel like. I feel like a bobblehead when I've got it on. Joey Vidmer says, I saw a video that popped up that was a hate video towards you, and I just got to say it made me very angry. Don't worry about it. Don't lose any sleep about it. I certainly don't. If you're on the internet, people are going to hate you. That's just the way of the world. That's the way it is. I mean, there are people out there that, who hate Steve Irwin and Mr. Rogers, right? You'll find those guys everywhere. Not that I can even compare to those guys. I'm just saying, if you're on the internet, people will hate you. So I don't let it bother me. So don't let it bother you either. Victoria Calendar says, Howdy Ox, looking forward to the stream. Best of luck in the game. Also, what type of exercise is best for swimmers? Pool ops. <clears throat> and that also makes perfect sense. Pool ops. Jared Chauver on Facebook says, ha, 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 math makes Oxhorn brain hurt, lol. Yeah, it does. It does. Even when it's not late at night, but it's late at night. Jake Ben says, quick, nurse, give Ox 33 cc's of the Pythagorean theorem. Oh, we'll, we'll leave that to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Matthew Bryant says, what happens when you cross a calculator and a dog? You get a friend that you can always count on. rough oh thank you for that one matthew and then kyle warfield says uh you with that helmet is like when you turn big head on <laughs> it is isn't it it's just it it writes its own jokes it's comically oversized <laughs> i don't understand i mean i wanted this nuts so that i could wear it see that's the problem i just wanted a cool helmet to to display on my shelf i didn't want to actually wear it but they made this so that people could wear it and so of course they had to make it huge and it's giant look at that <laughs> oh god matthew ryan says what is the solution to any equation multiply both sides by zero i like it that's how I'm going to do math from now on jared chauver says i dare you to wear that through the whole stream lol uh I mean, I, no, I'm just, thank you for the dare, but no, just, I don't, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to do that. The red lights are cool, but I can barely speak. Matthew Rowland says, uh, you guys found anything? Nothing here. How about you? No, not here. Anything from you guys? We ain't found crap. And I can't repeat this on camera, but another classic Mel Brooks quotes from Spaceballs. Thank you for that one, Matthew Rowland. Say, Jack says, hey, Ox, it's my wife's birthday. Can you give Ashley a shout out, please? Shout out to Ashley from Oxhorn and say, Jack, happy birthday, Ashley. I hope you have a wonderful one. Jake Benz on Facebook says, what do you call Dr. Frankenstein without sleep? Dr. Crankenstein. <laughs> He's cranky. Didn't get his sleep. Oh, that guy. Thank you, Jake. And then Matthew Ryan says, what do geometry teachers have for floor decorations? Area rugs. Uh, can we, is this, we're just, you're doing math stuff on purpose, aren't you guys? Just, this is on purpose at this point. Rockland says, Matt is combing the desert. Giant comb might come in handy for Ox if he keeps going with the hair. Yeah, yeah, the hair keeps on going. It's getting bigger and bigger. Matthew Ryan says, what do geometry teachers have for floor decoration? Oh, I read that one already. I just read it. Uh, 
Robin on Facebook says, Hi, not feeling well, not going to stay, but love y'all. Robin, I'm so sorry to hear that you're not feeling well. I'm glad that you came to the program today to say hi. Always wonderful to hear from you. I hope you feel better soon, and I can't wait to see you again. Get some good sleep tonight, okay? Freddie Simmons says, According to a recent survey, 14% of people don't know the opposite of these words. Always coming from take me down. Oh, my God. You almost got me to say it out loud. You almost got <laughs> uh, that's That's a Rick roll that I have never heard before. That, very creative, Freddie Simmons. Thank you for that one. Gwendolyn says, A Blue Ridge caravan leaves Big Bend West at 9 a.m. going 5 miles per hour. Another caravan leaves Big Bend East at 11 a.m. going 4 miles per hour. How long until ghouls eat them? Crap. Just, can I say crap on camera, or is that too obscene? I'm just saying crap here, because I don't want to have to deal with that. Rachel says, did you read the size description before buying it, lol? Why is Bethesda incapable of making props to scale? I just, this is my problem when it comes to props. I, I see the pictures on the internet, and I imagine what they would look like in my office, and I go, ooh, that would be perfect. But then it comes, and inevitably it's the wrong size. I got the Deathclaw head, and it's tiny. It's a baby Deathclaw head that I've got mounted on my wall. I don't look like a vicious hunter. No, I look like I stepped on a Deathclaw egg, and the head popped off of a fetus or something. That's what's hanging on my wall over there. And then I see this helmet, and I go, ooh, that's going to be great. An official Bethesda prop of the NCR helmet. And now I'm freaking Lord Helmet here out of Spaceballs. I mean, why, guys? They can't even do the bottle size right. I bought the bottles off the official store and it's, it's not right. It's the other two small or too big. The Nuka-Cola dark bottle is like twice the size of a Nuka-Cola bottle. The other bottles they have for sale are like teeny tiny little bottles. As if they're just shots. You're buying bottles of Nuka-Cola. Shots of Nuka-Cola. Little Nuka-Cola shots. I just want a normal sized bottle of Nuka-Cola. Bethesda, please. No? Jessica Sharp says, you wear it for Halloween with a matching costume and tell everyone you are a fallout bobblehead. Yeah, I'll, I'll get away with that. Of course, I'd have to wear an oversized costume for it to even make look remotely normal. Jake Ben says, the duck walks into a bar and the bartender says, how you paying? The duck replies, put it on my bill, lol. See, that's... That's a good one. I mean, yes, yeah, it's got some money in there. We're talking currency, which, you know, has to do with numbers, but it's wholesome. It's clean. It's easy to understand, you know. Sean Fernando says, Lord Helmet Ox. Did I say Lord Helmet? Did I say Darth Helmet? <laughs> Richard Phillips says, don't forget to take a drink. Thank you very much, Richard Phillips. Chininator says, why did the two fours skip lunch? They already ate. I believe that one makes more sense depending upon inflection. Why did the two fours skip lunch? They already ate. That doesn't really help it though, does it? Nah, it makes sense if you read it. Ranker says, here's a gun lore to make up for the math joke. The pistol in the game is a 1908 Colt Pocket Hammerless. It even has the correct capacity. It's nice to see something other than the 1911 in a game for once. Oh, I see. The, ga the gun that's in the game we are playing now is a 1908 Colt Pocket Hammerless. Thank you for that. Charlie Furge says, hey, Ox, why can't a leopard hide? He's always spotted. Another good one. All right, folks. Got a few more minutes, and then we're going to dive into the game. Jake Benz on Facebook says, Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine, you're just, 
I mean, you're just pulling all these math jokes out. But that's not even math, it's just a number joke. We've heard that one before, but Jake, thank you just so much. Thank you. Ranker says, I thought the head was Spike from Big Mountain. Oh, yeah, that's what we decided, right? He's Spike. But even then, he's kind of smaller than Spike. I showed off the head a couple weeks ago, and Spike was a small, tiny Deathclaw, but he wasn't that small. I mean, he was really small, but I think this head is even smaller than Spike from Big Mountain. But we'll go ahead and say it was Spike. And Spike was tough, so. Yeah, we'll go with that. Matthew Bryan says, Three statisticians go out hunting together. After a while, they spot a solitary rabbit. First statistician takes aim and overshoots. The second takes aim and undershoots. The third jumps up and yells, We got him! I take the average of... Oh, that's such a great joke. Matthew, just loving these math jokes. Just tell me more about statisticians. Mm, I just can't get enough. It's so good. Oh. Sarah says, Oxhorn, did you see the trailer for the Amazon Lord of the Rings show thing? Jeff Bezos committed to not using CGI. And the budget is higher than any other show. I'm going to have to give it a chance. I mean, that sounds amazing. From everything, I did not see the trailer, but I did see some uh, posters, some marketing posters. And from everything I saw, is it does it take place during the time of Isildur? Like, what's what time period are we talking about? Are they actually mining, mining the Silmarillion for stories? Or are they making up something new? I don't want to see anything new. If Tolkien didn't write it, or if Christopher didn't write it, I don't want to see it. It's not Tolkien. It's not Lord of the Rings. It's not in that Middle Earth universe, in my opinion. But if it is something that they wrote about previously, then I'll give it a chance. Levi on Facebook says, My wife asked if I've seen our dog bowl. I said, No, I didn't know dogs could. Bowl. Lovely, Levi. That's great. Thank you. Matthew Bryan says, last one. Ugh. There was a statistician that drowned crossing a river. It was three feet deep on average. Dude, we just had that joke in the chat. Matthew, Matthew, that one just came up earlier. Man, did you, did you give me that one earlier? Or was that Jake? Was that Jake giving me statistician jokes? Matthew, we heard that one already. <laughs> Deuteronomist says, you're not going to get me to correct you and say Stripe. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah, it's Stripe. What did I say? Spike? Stripe from Big Mountain. Follow it, New Vegas. Old World Blues. Stripe. Oh, Spike. It is Stripe. Sarah says, I'm not sure exactly. I'm just so tired of the overuse of CGI, so I'm happy, even if only for that. Yeah, I am as well. I think there are moments when used in moderation, it's great. Like in the... Original Peter Jackson trilogy, it was, there was such a light touch. I mean, sure, if you've got these Nazgul flying around, breathing fire, right. But when the wizard, like, if you watch Harry Potter and, and you see the magic, you know, it's spectacular. If you watch any other wizarding program with mages and so forth, it's spectacular. But what's anything that's spectacular that Gandalf did? He's shown a beam of white light? It was powerful. It was epic. And it turned the Nazgul away. But it wasn't flashy. And it shouldn't have been flashy. It wasn't supposed to be flashy. The entire point of, of Gandalf the White using his powers was not to you know, put on a big show. It was to get results. It was to show the power of um, Iluvatar. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, I'm glad that they're not going to be using a bunch of CGI heavy stuff. Use it in moderation. When it needs it, use it. If you can't use uh, prosthetics for it, if you can't use makeup for it, if you can't use camera tricks for it, then sure, fine. CGI, but in in a light touch, in moderation.
DJ Evisceration says CGI trolls, mofo. Were there, were there Mo and Fo and CGI trolls in the Lord of the Rings? I thought it was all prosthetics. I know they had some CGI in The Hobbit, but... Hmm. Ace of Spades says, but cigar... What cigar are you smoking today, Ox? I'm smoking something that's giving me tongue bite. It's an acidy thing. Oh, I'm not enjoying it, but I'm enjoying it, doggone it. I'm enjoying this cigar. I paid for it. I'm going to enjoy it. Levi with a donation of stars. Thank you, Levi. Matthew Ryan says, I eat bedtime, night all. I eat, Matthew. Have a good night. Thanks for stopping by. He says, I'm old and I didn't hear it. Give me a break, lol. Hey, if you guys would give me a break with your math jokes. Just pouring the math jokes down my throat. I don't want any more math jokes. Not this late at night. Thank you, as always, Matthew. Have a wonderful night and we'll see you soon. Jake Ben says, uh, it's a shame nothing's built in America anymore. I just bought a new radio. It was built in Antenna. I don't even know where that is. Built in Antenna. Oh. Wonderful, Jake. Mm, that's a good one. Tony J says they have a cave troll in Lord of the Rings 1. Oxhorn. Look, I understand. I'm not saying CGI wasn't used in the Lord of the Rings. Obviously, it was it was used. I watched the extended edition of every single movie, and I watched all of the behind-the-scenes footage for every single movie, and I saw all of the CGI they did, but then I also watched everything that the Weta Workshop did, and all of the weapons they made, and the costumes they made, and the makeup that they did, and the practical effects that they did, and the camera angles that they did. And sure, they used CGI where it was necessary. I mean, if they could have found a cave troll, then they would have gotten a cave troll. But, I mean, their options were CGI or claymation. And they went CGI. And, okay, I'm not going to hate them for that. Fine. You want a cave troll? Go CGI instead of claymation. They're not going to be able to pull off a practical effect with a cave troll. You know? But I'm just saying that... For you know, for the most part, they went practical effects, and I like practical effects. I mean, Aragorn broke his freaking toe, and the scream was real. That's some method acting there. Viggo Mortensen, Moody Exorcist says I had a professor named Mr. Gandalf once. Nobody passed his class. You shall not pass that class. Colonel 87th uh, with, uh, became a Bronze Ox. Thank you very much, Colonel. <laughs> Ouch. Charlie Fergie says, Hey Ox, what does Fallout 76 and a gold-plated Velcro have in common? They're both $70 ripoffs. Ouch. Ooh, Charlie. Velcro. Fallout 76, rip off. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Few more minutes, folks. And Jessica McDonald on Facebook says if they needed a cave troll, they could have used my old math teacher. But um I like it. No Name says, that's not fair. Velcro actually has a benefit to society. I mean, Bethesda employed thousands of people to make Fallout 76, but sure, sure, we'll say that it had no benefit to society.
Okay, this one is finally at the the really acidic part. Like it all kind of concentrates down at the very end of the cigar so that by the time you get to the end, it's like just uh, sucking on acid. Time for something new. This is a brick house. I saved the best for last that was an, a, a La Aurora. Typically, I really like them, but I had set that one out, so it wasn't quite as good as it was when I lit it. This is a brick house. Brand new. Just cut it. Beautiful. Elena Sherwood says the T-Rex from Jurassic Park is still scary to this day. It was an animatronic. Yeah, and that's a great example of uh, animatronics and practical stuff done well. All right, folks, it's time to start the game. Let's see if I can find it. In Sound Mind. Jessica on Facebook says, I'm heading to bed. Have fun with your stream, Oxhorn. I might not be able to watch your next scotch and smoke rings. No worries, Jessica. You take care of what you need to. I'll just be grateful when I see you again on the program. Have a wonderful night. Now, remember, folks, as I said, this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings is going to be shorter than usual. We're going to have about two hours of gameplay today. Two hours of gameplay. The Mad Wizard says, Lights! Right. Thank you for not letting me forget. Let's hit those lights. Okay, auto save, 6.06 p.m. What? Oh, okay. And DS says, Ox, we ain't gonna pretend it isn't hanging in the friggin' window shade. Go ahead, raise all your window shades. I dare you. Hanging in the w window shade. I, I, what are you hang on, look, it's nighttime. As, as you should know, as anyone knows, if you're in a lit room in your house at night, it's much easier for people to see in. And for the sake of privacy, I keep my blinds down when I'm broadcasting in my room, you know? So I'm not going to open my, my blinds just because DS says there's something in them. I mean, like I'm going to fall for that. Thank you, DS. for the 
You're not getting it, Wales. The deeper you go, the darker it gets. Playing electrician won't change that. So I'm gonna have to stop you here. Brace yourself. Oh my god. Oh my god. I survived. I used every bullet in my magazine, but I survived. Oh, okay. I probably was supposed to use some of the electricity to survive that. But I didn't. Ooh, glad to see it's still good. I could plug a chip in there. Okay, so that's what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to use the electricity to form a barrier that those guys would have died to, but instead I just shot them all. <clears throat> Greg Williams says, Hey Ox, glad I made it. What do you call potatoes that have babies? Tater tots. I like that one. And Greg Williams says also, don't forget to double tap. <laughs> right. Won't forget to double tap. Waste of ammo though. Okay, uh... Find a way to defeat the bull, fix the loading platform to get to the second factory floor, collect all the pills. Uh, not working. Uh, nothing happened. One, two. One, two, one. I could plug a chip in there. to try. Voltage is too weak. Voltage is too weak, but I've got I've got everything turned on. Oh. One, two. So that one should be two. And that one should be one.
All right, that's everything turned on. Is that what I'm supposed to do? Find a way to defeat the bull. Is there a way out here? I need him to destroy that. I gotta get in there. I need him to destroy that box so I can jump in there. There's something hiding in there. Come and get me. Oh no, I know. That's not how we do it. We gotta use this. All right, so I guess I can't figure out how to get in here. <clears throat> right, well, let's get that extra shot that we saw lying around here. There it is. Greg Williams says, make you yell Toro, Toro, when you win. Okay, well now, I think that this puzzle was just to defeat those enemies. I'm gonna take all three of them with me. Because I still need to activate... I'll come back for this if I need it. ...the lift.
Oh, come on, man. And they're not gonna give me anything for that? Jeez. Alright, well, this should do it. Put in. I could plug a chip in there. The three. And that does it. doing wrong it's fully powered oh right one two three that's the three one two three and that's one two doesn't work. That does it. this now. a figure. Okay, control is the name of the game, and we are in the control room. Coincidence? I think not. Delicious. Assembly control room. Assembly room. Blue, purple, green. Attention all employees, as renovation work continues on our brand new distribution center, we are still in the process of removing and repurposing machinery and equipment left over from the quarry. Do not attempt to use any of them without prior authorization, as improper use may lead to injury or even death. Ask before using anything you're not familiar with, S. Hill. Experimental EX0925 2LUR Lure Pill Ingredients Chart Bolepo Pheromone Mix Secured Case in First Floor Safe Room Tryptocybin Mushroom Extract Recordia Cold Storage Tryptocybin Mushroom Extract Ricus <laughs> Third Floor Ask Mr. Hill Tubed liquid compounds are to be placed in assigned slots in the fabricator, along with the receptacle at the bottom. Pill jars can be found in storage. 
Fabricator, that's the big machine in the next room. Please adhere to all safety and sanitary regulations. Okay, so at least these are color-coded for us. The pheromone mix is purple, the Ricordia is blue, the Ricus is green. Purple, blue, and green. There's the assembly room. We need to get inside. We need to get to small storage and frozen storage. I need to go back and get my chips. Okay, so this is where we put the ingredients. And that's how we started. Right. Uh God, why the valves, man? Oh, there it is. I could plug a chip in there. That does it. Okay, but I gotta get rid of it now. Oh yes. Fast denied, speed increase. Numb. Can't carry any more of this. Numb, he says. Love it. Shotgun shells. Oh, plenty of flares. That's great. I'll come back for this if I need it. It's because I have all of that darkness to get rid of. All right, so before I start taking care of all of the darkness, because I don't know which valve I need to do, I should probably go get the other ingredients. And to do that, I need the other chip, the one that does three.
McCready, keep your damn lure pill experiments as far away from ours as possible. One of those pills found its way into our chemical shipments and nearly blew up a delivery truck. A mixing of our chemicals and your pills is just a disaster waiting to happen. Nedry. Okay, well, we need to find this pill, the lure pill, and place it on these chemicals to gain access to that. Okay, fine. So where was the lure pill? Let's go back to assembly control. The... Pheromone mix? Oh, we have to mix all of this to create the lure pill. First floor safe room, cold storage, third floor. Frozen storage? So frozen storage is over there. That's the room I was just in. So it's gonna be up the, the, the pipes. But we need, and then there's small storage. Okay, hold on. No, that leads to the assembly room. According to the map, that's cold storage. Yeah, frozen storage. And that's small storage with which we already looted. All right, so that's the three. What's my name? Dude, what the heck? What was that? <laughs> What's that? Oh God. Okay, let's go back and get <laughs> our chip. Okay, so this environment is changing on us. And that's the assembly room. Okay, let's go back and get our chip. Third floor research and development. Naughty Applejack, a silver ox and member for 22 months, says hi ox and hi to everyone. I'm so glad you keep doing, you're keeping on with Sherlock Holmes. Thank you, Naughty Applejack. Something stops me from getting closer. Closer.
I could plug a chip in there. Bingo. Okay, so that was third floor research and development. Okay, grabbing the gun. Lab. It's a keycard reader. It looks new. So I got to get the key card. It's no use. I could plug a chip in there. I think the chip I used is too weak. All right, so I got to go back for my better chip. Problem is I don't have the other chips with me. I left them at the elevator. That's... but, but I must believe. Third floor research and development. Alright, so this is where I'm going to get the final component. In the lab. Right now I'm at Mr. Hill's office, the archives. In the waiting area. There's the archives. Central Intelligence Bureau. One of the scientists, Rosemary James, has presented an intriguing complementary research proposition and has asked to establish a research station by the radio tower in Elysium State Park. Normally I wouldn't bother you with such a request, but our lack of progress here is getting worrisome. I've looked into the premises. It is technically government property, but no one's set foot in there in years. Requesting ex expedited clearance, William Byrd liaison. Mayor Pharmaceuticals, third floor is restricted to those without level 5 access. Anyone caught on the third floor without the proper credentials will be terminated on the spot. List of the only people allowed up here. Mr. Bird Liaison, Mr. S. Hill, myself, Rosemary James, Dennis Nedry, Seth Brundell, Jay McCready, Sophia Delator. List of people not allowed up here. Drivers, Gary, unless I'm here, Bob, anyone else? Too much for one man. There's the key card. Your research proposition is quite fascinating, Rosemary. I never would have thought to integrate electromagnetic radiation via radio into our research. If you're serious about presenting this to me, or to the higher ups, then you have my blessing, Seth. Electromagnetic radiation via radio into our research. Okay, well I got the key card, that's what I needed. Let's 
see what's in Mr. Hill's office. But now we have everything we need to get into the lab. I'm not going to be able to do that with the one I have. I could plug a chip in there. Ah, voltage is too weak. Okay. But at least we can get into the lab. have to have that one activated too. Okay. Well, great. So I got to go all the way back to the lift to get the key that the chips that I left there. So here we are. We got to go back there down there. get back to the lift. There's the lift. <sighs> Crap. Do I have to go through all that darkness again? No, that allowed me to open this door so I don't have to go through all the darkness again. Great. Yep, it's in the hangar. So I got to open this door to get down there to get the, uh, whoops. You gotta drop ammo, man. All right, so I gotta find a way down without using the elevator so I can grab the keys and come back up. That's either gonna be the incinerator, packaging, or the ventilation room. Looks like I've gotta power up the ventilation room to get back down. So, oh, there we go. Plug a chip in there. Voltage is too weak. Ah! It's blocked from the other side. It's locked. 
It's no use. It's no use. Okay, and so for that I need a key. A key to the incinerator room. Oh, man. Alright, so this one needs... Two. If I can somehow get back up with just the two, I'll be able to do this. So we have to have the three in there, because there are three boxes that need to be powered. There's the two. I could plug a chip in there. And that still works. Great. So we can use the two. Can't take another bite. To open this door. Oh, but we gotta leave it. There's the key. Oh. He's got me in the incinerator. Great. What? What? Oh no, they only stay up. They only stay up while I have the mirror. Oh, come on! Oh, it's up there! How am I gonna get up there? How do I get up there? There we go. Why does it sound like something else is in here with me? <laughs> uh, Sonoff NZ says, try the office one third floor. Yeah, if I can get out of here, I will. I 
need that anymore. It's locked. Where's the key? Guess not. I picked up the key. I could plug a chip in there. Oh, I guess I didn't get it the last time I was in. All right. Okay, so this is gonna let me down. Okay, what if I jump to the sides there? Didn't run fast enough. If you're taking shots, that's shot number one. Oh no. Okay, so that isn't it. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm right by the elevator and the incinerator. First floor processing and a hangar. All right. Bingo. That's the way back out. I no longer need the elevator. I can now take all the chips. That's what I wanted. Processing zone. Oh 
right, I don't think I should be going there until I figure out the puzzle upstairs. Let's do that. All right, there's the elevator. Okay, we now have everything we need to solve these puzzles. Let's see, we completed the incinerator. Can't get into packaging, it's blocked, but we completed the ventilation. Third floor research and development. Empty pill jar. The label says experimental. Uh, Mayor Holding. Uh, destination Mayor Distribution. Ten query. Really? Oh! Crash to desktop again. Actually, complete computer shutdown again when I tried to shoot my shotgun. All right, well, now we know at least that some guy spawns behind us as soon as we find the pill jar. So we'll be prepared when that happens. Thankfully, there was probably an autosave. The only problem is if it got corrupted. So let's hope that that didn't happen. It happened to us in our last broadcast. Let's try this again. If we're lucky... We won't have any Windows or Steam updates to install. Then I can get the chats back up. One notable thing about these crashes is it only happens during moments of intense um, special effects. Barrel, muzzle flashes... Um, Flare guns, enemies that have lighting effects, that's what tends to crash us. Are you guys going to count that one as a shot? I didn't really die. All right. Got to log in. And while that boots, let's get the chats back up. Looking good. Kenny Allen on Facebook says, honestly, I'm cool with the change in broadcast time. It means I can watch more often since I usually have to be at work at 6 a.m. Good. I'm glad it'll work for everybody. All right. We're back into the game. So far, so good. Okay, and we didn't backtrack that far. the elevator <sighs> now that I know an enemy is coming
Oh my god! For crying out loud, man. I can't even use the shotgun in the game without crashing. I tried to use the environmental explosive barrels as much as I could, but they didn't seem to destroy him. I guess I'll try to pistol this guy down. That means I got to get a lot of headshots. How lame is this? Crashing whenever I use the shotgun, the one weapon in the game I actually enjoy using. That's not true. I enjoy using the pistol too. I have to say the gunplay feels pretty good. For the kind of game it is. Okay, and we're up. MG says, whoa, what's going on? The game keeps, uh, keeps crashing whenever I use my shotgun. That's what's going on. Uh, Jared says, Mayday, Mayday, PC shut down. <laughs> oh, thank you for your patience, everybody. We had this problem last week with the game as well. Just got to be clever and creative to find unique ways around this. Okay, no shotgun on the big guys. Adam M says time for Dark Souls since this keeps crashing. <laughs> I've, I've actually made a lot of progress in Dark Souls. You, you'd all be very proud of me. I got my, I, I got past the dragon and I've been making progress. So um, maybe, maybe some Dark Souls. Who knows? Man, what is it with these indie games? The last indie game I tried to play on this channel got corrupted when I downloaded the most recent update. We'll see if I can get through this without using the shotgun. I could always use the flare gun, but is the flare gun going to have the same problem? Come on, get closer.
Not bad. We did it without the shotgun, folks. Whoo. Alright, so this was saying, um... Pill jars, plastic, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, stickers, roll nine, cleaning supplies, 50, bleach, mops, wipes, window cleaner, mop, one, beverage cups, sleeves, 30, coffee filters, sleeves, 20. Authorized Agent Asher, February 15th, 1997. Okay, so we got the pill jar. That goes to the third floor research and development. We could access the lab now. Did we do packing? It's blocked from the other side. Blocked from the other side. But right, there were a few more puzzles that required the three volt chip. Here we go, and I think it was frozen storage. I could plug a chip in there. That does it. Cryptocybin mushroom extract Recordia, blue liquid. Uh, Cryptocybin mushroom extract Recordia formula, blah, 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 melting point, blah, blah, blah. principal psychoactive constituent of the tryptocybin mushroom potency high, displays sedative, hypnotic, depressant, and hallucinogenic psychoactivity, erosion and loss of potency linked to subtle heat, keep frozen. What, bro? What are you doing now, huh? All right, we got two of the three things we need. The next one was in... third floor. That's going to be in the lab. The Bolepo pheromone mix is in a secured case in the first floor safe? Okay, well, we got the Recordia. Let's go put that in there. It's the blue stuff. Blue is in the middle, right? No, blue was on the left. We have to do one at a time, I'm guessing. So that's purple. Okay, let's go to the third floor lab.
plug a chip in there. It's a keycard reader. It looks new. Nothing happened. What am I missing? One. That's two. That's three. Detect and all. All right, I've got eight pills left to find. Nice. Wow, six pills left. Central Intelligence Bureau. Agent Rainbow is compromised of the following. Cryptocybin mushroom liquefied. Zangrafozol, central nervous system stimulant. Metamin, sedative. Past experimentation concluded in effects such as Amnesia, hysteria, psychosis, hallucinations. See reference Bzultra, Bzultra, the Montauk Files. Clearance required. Right, well, we know that one of the ingredients is held here. Just gotta find it. Mayor Pharmaceuticals Material Requisition Form, February 1st, 1997, work order, blah, 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 location QF, persons preparing requisition, Jay McCready. Recipient Department Ancillary Research, inventory material items needed for project, 200 pieces, uh, 200 times five quantity of age, age, Agent Rainbow Residue. Oh, that's the chemical that we've been finding. And it's all tainted with these other chemicals. 10 quantities of 200 pieces of tryptobicin extract. Test report. Date submitted the 17th of January, 1997. Date analyzed the 18th. Date reported the 20th. Sample analyzed. Zangrafozol CNS compound, batch 13G. Sample number 2001, batch 13G added absorbance. Subject 1928 bovine. So they tested on a cow. They tested the brain levels. Results of mental breakdown followed by cardiac arrest. Subject disposed of. Sample number 2049, batch 13G added absorbance. Subject 1945, suidae? Suidae? What's a suidae? What's the Latin for suidae? They also tested brain levels. Psychotic break followed by severe brain hemorrhaging disposed of subject. What's a suidae? 2236 added enzymes. Subject 1968, simian. I should know what simian is. I feel like I should know that one. What's simian? Uh, brain levels. Subject appeared to be receptive at first, but soon entered a catatonic state and was disposed of. Analysis. Zangrafozol is still unstable at this stage. Simian is monkey, isn't it? What's suidae? Its effects on the central nervous system are unpredictable. Further testing is required before we can proceed with human subject research. Rosemary James signed off. Dennis Nedry signed off. Seth Brundell signed off.
If Simeon is monkey and bovine is cow, what do we die? There's only so much I can carry. Come on, it's supposed to be here. I only have the mushroom extract. So we die as pig says IMG Snap. Oh, so they experimented on a pig. Thank you. Not here. Unless there's some tunnel. using a mirror. Yeah, I tried that, but usually... Oh, my God. Put away. Haunted. Put away. Spare. That's it. All right. I was in the wrong room. Central Intelligence Bureau, Agent Bird, your incident report is extremely worrisome. Letting the transport ship redacted under your watch make us question your capability as a field operative. The successful resurrection of redacted after lying dormant for 30 years depends on our ability to maintain a low profile. This is why Milton Haven was redacted site. The damage control you've performed does not alleviate our concerns. All it takes is one busybody with a camera that redacted, redacted, for our feet to be held to the fire. It's only a matter of time before the redacted starts redacted populace. We have a cover story prepared, but it'll only buy us a limited amount of time before the local media starts asking too many questions. If you do not wish to spend the next five years at one of our secure facilities, we suggest you get results soon. Redacted.
Mr. Hill, due to the sensitive nature of the redacted redacted, you are to keep it secured inside your new personal safe until it can be collected by somebody from the ancillary research team. The safe's default code is redacted. Do not, under any circumstances, store anything in the safe before changing the combination. Thank you, Berg. Regarding Max, let me get this straight. You hired a driver without a proper background check who then proceeds to crash one of our delivery trucks while carrying important cargo and when rightfully terminated, comes crashing into the quarry with his own truck demanding his job back? This is a major screw up. Do you realize that your poor decision making uh, poor decision making has put this entire facility in harm's way. He broke Gary from Electrical's jaw just for getting in his way. Max Nygaard isn't salt of the earth, he's dirt. I find it hard to believe that anyone in this big wide world cares about this madman, but it doesn't matter. Take care of him. Max Nygaard, Minos Quarry employee information, personal information, Max Nygaard, blah blah blah, telephone, blah blah, social security number. Sex male, 1952, married. Emergency contact, Alex Nygaard, spouse, same. Native citizen, uh, one wife, one child. Group insurance, not applicable. Labor union information, not applicable. Nice remarks, nothing. All right, so we gotta figure out the combination to this safe. What would the default number for this safe be? This was always written. Cryptocybin mushroom extract, Ricus, formula, blah, 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 melting point, blah, blah, blah. Potency medium, naturally occurring psychoactive chemical compound in the tryptocybin mushroom, a powerful neurotoxin, non-selective glutamate receptor antagonist, or agonist. For optimal extraction of compounds, keep at room temperature and dry storage. Got it. Now we just need the object on the first floor. pheromone mix on the first floor is the first one we have to put. A secured case in the first floor safe room. Alright, so we've got everything, but not, not what we need to start. Purple in middle, blue on left, green to the right. Okay, downstairs we go. Looks like we're going to have to avoid this Max guy. We can use our stealth. What's our stealth at? Four. Great, that's the highest of all of them.
secure case on the first floor. Case delivery protocol. Upon receiving a secured case, deliver it to the conveyor center, place the case on the conveyor belt, and use the controls to direct it to the safe room. Make sure you do not accidentally send the secured case to a different part of the facility, as that could result in the termination of your employment. Each secured case contains sensitive proprietary material. Defend it with your lives if necessary. Oh, great. Where did we just send it? supposed to be sending it though that's the question I flipped all of the green switches
Okay, so it's just going in a big loop. Okay, I need to find the destination. If I can find the destination, I can figure out where it's gonna go. Direct it into the safe room. Where is the safe room? There's the blast room. Finished work on your safe room. Once you flip the switch, the electromagnetic energy emitted should be enough to open the magnetic lock. Why you had me convert an old blast room into a room where you can open stuff is a mystery. You guys sure do love your protocols. Gary from Electrical. Okay, we found it. So, Toxic Sean says, hey Oxhorn, just stopping to say hello. Very behind, but enjoying this game. Stay cool, my friend. Many thanks for all the entertainment. You're welcome, my friend. Okay, that's the next one we have to remove. Which switch removes it? That one probably removes that. that. I think it's on the right path.
around the corner, come over here and plop down there. Dave says, Ox, will you play Dying Light 2? It just came out. Maybe. Bingo. Pheromone mix, potency very high, a potent ag ag aggregation pheromone found in only 7% of known beetle species, Coleoptera, specifically stemming from the central Amazon forest area. At its purest, at its purest the chemical substance has been found to have ag aggregation effects on other species other than its own beetle. It is highly illegal and dangerous to harvest this pheromone, let alone ship it out of the state of the Amazonas. Uh, this compound seems to have a volatile reaction to Agent Rainbow liquid form. Keep it sealed. It keep in sealed case unless properly handled. Great. We got the purple one. Let's get out of here. Processing controls. No, thank you. Oh, we're in the wrong room. We've got to find the door. We might have to come back here later, though. This is usually where the guy... He can't climb stairs. Tell me he can't climb stairs. Purple, blue, green. a small object in there. It's no use. Well, come on. This is the middle one. Purple. No dice. What? Craft the lure pill to tame the bull. Collect all... Craft the lure pill. Bow, lepo, pheromone mix. A vial with glowing purple liquid. Oh, come on. Worth a try. Oh, come on. Oh, I gotta put the empty pill jar. Oh, this isn't where I put the components. I gotta go up those stairs. Oh, the valves. Oh, I've got to I've got to direct the flow. Oh, this is a nightmare. All right, let's go to the source. Here we go. There's a small slot for a vial here. Purple. 
blue. Green. Simply put, X0952 Lure or Lure Pill was created to test cattle control as subjects have been found to follow the scent of the pheromone after treatment. Its effects on humans is still unknown. Human testing is unfortunately still frowned upon. pills. Monsters seem to like it. Maybe I should try. I hope these are safe. Take pill? I can take the pill? I've only got three pills. Looks like I can come back here and get more at any time. All right, now I need to tame the beast. Oh, hey, guy. It's blocked from the other side. How do I tame the beast? He locked me in.
one of those pills found its way into our chemical shipment and nearly blew up a delivery truck. A mixing of our chemicals and your pills is a disaster waiting to happen. Let's see, can I really go fill up again over here? I gotta wait until it's out. I don't have to come back, but if I clear areas with a lure pill, I find more lure pills. Lure pills can be used to attract enemies. Lure pills also boost your stats and restore health. Oh, cool. Big red button. Of course there's a big red button. What does the big red button do? Let's look around back here first. Opens the door to packaging. That's what the big red button does. Fine. Two big guys, and I can't use my shotgun because it crashes the computer. Fun.
it that a fight with these guys causes my computer to crash? Why? Well, I guess it's not just the shotgun. It's the guys. It's these enemies. Something about these enemies is causing the computer to crash. Okay. Well, I guess that means I can use the shotgun. There's got to be an animation that the big guys are using that causes the computer to crash. If I can prevent them from using that animation. But I don't know what it is because it crashes before I can see it. Right. Try this again. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. I'm back in chat. I just logged into Steam, loading the game. It's when they're close to me. It only happens when they're really close to me and they're swinging at me. I'm able to get shots off. It's not the shotgun. It's some sort of, con it's, it's got to be some attack that the monsters are using against me that if I see it, I crash. Okay, I think I've got an idea. I'll try it, see what happens. If I can shoot and turn around so that I don't see the attack that he swings at me, if I'm quick enough, maybe I can avoid a crash to desktop. And it's just these enemies that are causing it. If I can get through this tape, hopefully the rest of the game will be okay because these enemies aren't going to be in any other tape. Danger Jim says, Yikes, Ox, there's no assisted mode for this. No, there is not. Jared Shover says, play another game after this doesn't work. Well, uh, 
I don't have a lot of time. I've got 10 minutes left in the broadcast anyway. <laughs> Okay. I mean, at least it's not corrupting my autosaves like ha like what happened last time I broadcasted this game. I was right up in his face. That's the thing. But I have to be in his face to shoot him with the shotgun. Uh, what if I find a spot high up where they can't get me and I can just use my pistol to shoot at their red glowing orb? That way they're not close to me. I'm brainstorming here, guys. Try to get this to work. That way they're close. That, that way they're not close to me and I can land my hits. Two of them, though. When it was one, I could kite him around and shoot at his eye from a distance. But when there's two of them, it makes it so much more difficult to get this to work with while trying to get around the, the glitch in the game. I'm going to give it one more shot. So, I mean, I do have the lure pills. I suppose when they get close, I could throw a pill to make them go farther away. Whereupon I can shoot them with a pistol. Is that, is that the point? I could also use the flare gun. Would the flare gun work? Does the flare gun actually do damage? I don't know. Lower your settings, says Marquez. Worth a shot. All right, I just put my settings on low.
Oh my god, I did it. That was it. I had to turn the settings all the way down to low. <coughs> Norby9k says, hey Ox, love all you do. By the way, we are neighbors. I'm in Redmond. Hey, Redmond is in my neck of the woods. I'll come back for this if I need it. Looks like that was it. Lots of pills over here. One. I could plug a chip in there. Oh, but that electrifies it. Interestingly, after turning the set the settings down, I'm getting a lot of hitching. So that leads back here. I'm back at the incinerator. I still got to figure out a way to kill what's his name. Zane the Insane says, congrats, Ox. That's okay. There was probably at least one, one game causing similar grief for everyone. Yeah, probably. Okay. We got the pills. We opened all the doors. We need to find a way to kill the guy. Did we open all the doors? I think we did. Let's do a quick run through, real quick. Yep, that opens up all those spots. We did everything upstairs. We went to frozen storage. Don't need to go back in there. Assembly room. Why is this locked now? Oh, that's right. He locked it. Delicious. So got to use the pills as a way to defeat the guy. But the blast room isn't going to work because it's now an electromagnetic room. So there's no point getting him to go into the blast room. The incinerator. How do we get him down into the incinerator?
If you pilled it, they will come. Ha 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 ha. Okay. So we need to pill it into what? The incinerator? But the, the incinerator is right over there. I guess I don't understand, like, I, I understand that we can lure him here, but I don't understand. <sighs> Processing controls. So the incinerator is directly above me and he's not on that floor, so I can't lure him upstairs. Oh, he's not here anymore. Oh. Okay. Uh. If you kill him, he will come. All right, he's not in this room anymore. So. But why would I want him to come here? I wouldn't want him to come here. Toxic dump site? Let's see what happens if I throw a pill into the incinerator. Nothing. Okay, then I'll just bring him down into that room below. Lure the bully into the quarry. the quarry. The quarry is over there. How do I get to the quarry?
Right here, big guy! on the water where's he supposed to go Gotta drain the quarry first. Minos Quarry sold to Mayor Pharma. On Tuesday, the Minos Quarry officially closed its doors for the last time. Mayor Pharmaceuticals, an American leader in medicine and science, has reportedly purchased the entire quarry grounds and then some. Their, their plans to convert the old quarry into a shiny new distribution center will begin within two months' time. We are very excited, says Mr. Stephen Hill of Mayor Milton Haven, is near and dear to our hearts, and we are proud to do our part by creating gainful employment for the people of this fine town. We can't wait to become part of the family. The historical quarry, owned and operated by the Minos Corporation for decades, was primarily used for the mining of silver and lead, and was considered to be a bedrock of employment for many Mil in Milton Haven. As the yield began to decline over the past decade, however, the Minos Quarry had streamlined its operations and reduced its workforce significantly across the quarry, the processing factory, and adjacent power station. Mayor swooped in and saved Minos's behind, says Bob, one of the few employees that was still working on the quarry grounds at the time of the buyout. I don't mind. So long as we don't bomb ourselves back to the Stone Age, people will always need security guards. Right. Drain the quarry. Oh, of course it's not that easy. Of course. There we go. That's what I like to see. Still going down. No? Was that not it?
Oh, this is so finicky. Well, I'm supposed to get him to come up one of these ramps, right? to one of the pillars, that's what I'm doing. the machine. Be your daughter. You 
will always be her dad. Max tried to fight back and died for it. Your death won't be in vain. Thank you for leading me here. Too much for one man. Achievement unlocked. Take a chill pill. See if we can pick up any more pills while we're down here. I'll come back for this if I need it. There's the door. Years of flawless driving. Chemical company buys out the quarry, starts shipping a bunch of toxic chemicals. They enrage him. His anger causes his wife to freak out, understandably, worried about their daughter, understandably. She divorces him. He loses his wife. He loses custody of his daughter. He makes one mistake after 20 years because the company inadvertently drugged him. It's the company's fault he made the mistake and they fire him for it. He loses everything. He 
He doesn't know why. I don't understand. How could Meyer do something like this? Because they think they could get away with it. Listen, someone called here while you were out. It sounded urgent. You should check your messages ASAP. Gotcha. Dr. Wales, you there? Listen, the meeting went bad. They took her, man. I barely escaped. I don't know what they're gonna do. They're after me, and they might be coming after you, too, just for seeing me. I'm sorry. Please contact me so we can figure this out. And don't drink from the tap. Oh, shoot. Isn't that Lucas Cole, one of your patients? Yes. Though he didn't show for his last appointment. You should call him back. Phones haven't really been working in my favor. Guess we have to do this the hard way. Lucas had a cabin in the forest, didn't he? You should try and see if you can access it from the building. Maybe there's something there that'll help us make contact with him. Or a tape. While you're at it, you should check out what's happening downstairs. This place is falling apart. Don't drink the tap water. That's why the other two people went crazy. Max did everything for his family. But does that excuse his behavior? Max wasn't a bad guy. He just... He let himself get consumed. Somehow this chemical company got their chemicals into the water, which is why just everyday people unassociated with the company started to go mad. Like the first lady... Who went, to the who went to the grocery store and freaked out? Is it me, or are you just taking all these pills willy-nilly? Like the Allen guy, who burned down his, fire his lighthouse on accident, because they were both drugged. They drank from the tap water. I wouldn't be surprised if those Meyer folks straight up got rid of Max. Oh, his poor daughter. Okay, so we have a couple of things to do. We need to go back to Mar uh, Matt's, uh, Max's... That trench coat guy needs a hobby. We need to go back to Max's apartment and uh, blow open the door to Maddie's room so that we can get the record and play that here. Then we need to go find the forest guy. So the whole distribution center is a hoax, right? That place is a straight up lab. And a super shady one too. Next time I'm heading you. I feel like you've already pet me about a hundred times. If I were to start charging you for pets, I'd be a millionaire. This isn't a petting zoo. <laughs> okay, thank you! <laughs> oh, shit. I'll be here. So the problem is I want to keep playing, but I got to go. Try experimenting with throwing those pills. The monsters seem drawn to them. Dude, would you stop talking to me? God, I can't even think. See you soon. All right, so I want to keep playing, but I'm out of time. I know what I want to do. I want to go get Max's tape. Well, wait a minute. Where's... Let's go get Max's tape. Max's record. What? Oops, this one's on me. The elevator was supposed to drop all the way down and explode. Since you're stuck there, starving to death, how about you take this opportunity to reflect on what a major pain in the ass
ass you've been. Oh, great. I just wanted to go to the record. You got it? Oh, this game looks... so much worse with ultra settings turned down. Did you call elevator service? <laughs> a grown man being bailed out by a cat. Come on, let's go. Thanks, cat. So this is what happens when I'm not around. Huh. Too much for one man. As if all this wasn't enough, you gotta get stuck in the vents. Seems like you know your way around, Cat. Have you stopped to wonder what the tapes really mean to you? They're not just recordings of your patients, that's for sure. You listen to their stories and troubles, but what of your own? Who decides the story of Desmond Wales? It's not too late, you know, to make a change. Your story's not set in stone. I could really go for a cheeseburger right about now. A cat that eats cheeseburgers. Uh, oops. I mean, Desmond, behave! This is my gas mask. Ah, sheesh. Stinky kitty. Cat's this is where you get off. See you back at the office. Doodles. Is this how I get behind that one door? No, oh, oh, I see. We're gonna get back up with the elevator out. Oh God. No, thank you. So I gotta break through that wall somehow. We already read all of this. Prodding and pushing, grinding down, break everything. Destruction. See red, how dare you, chicken. Okay, do we throw a pill at the wall? some renovations. Alright, the car won't work. There's no fuel.
Oh. I don't remember being able to use this before. So this says prodding and pushing, grinding down, break everything. That gives us the impression that the car is what we use to break down that wall, especially that. But... Feed the car? What a beast. Oh my god. Oh wow, okay. That did it. Thank you, chat. Oh my god. Dear Diary, it's me, Maddie. Today was a pretty good day. My friends all sang me happy birthday, and Charlotte O'Brien said 10 was the age we start liking boys, so I said, ew, duh. When I got home, Mom was crying. She said she wasn't feeling good, but later when she called Aunt Mary, I heard her say that Dad kicked a chair across the room and it broke, which scared her. She also said something about going to live there, but I don't know what she's planning. My wish for my birthday is that Dad finds a new job. I don't think driving makes him happy. He would be much happier if he could get a job working for one of those car repair shows he likes on television. Max, what does this tell you? Uh, what does this tell you? What I dream about and such? Desmond, not exactly. It clues me in to the way you think mostly. Fine, lay it on me. What might this be? Uh, nothing. No, really, I see nothing that makes sense. Try. Uh, a baby? A crying baby? Next. Second Im image. An animal? Some type of beast? Alright, third image. A bull. That's what it is. A big old bull. Coming to get you. In transcript. There's the vinyl. That's what we were looking for. And that poor little girl. Oh! Oh, that's so sad. It was her birthday. The balloon says, Dad. Miss you, Dad. Feels. Get in the feels. All right, let's go play this tape. How are we gonna get back? The elevator appears to be working now. for some music.
Wow, this is a happy song. I was wanting to headbang there. Oh, it gets all mellow. Is it me or is darkness fast approaching? It's getting crowded and it's hard to catch a breath. Awesome. Oh man, <clears throat> I wanted more of that guitar solo. I was just gonna. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wayne's World! Wayne's World! Alt Grendel says, Shredded Ox! <laughs> Thank you, Alt Grendel! Everything for his family. But just that excuse his behavior. I gotta step outside of this cat, is gonna keep talking Careful to me. Out there. Jared says, Rock and Roll Ox! Thank you, Jared! All right, everybody. We have to call it a night. Oh. <laughs> there we go. That's uh, Scotch and Smoke Rings for this week. We got all the way through Max's story. We found his final. We solved the case. Now it's time to move on to the next chapter. If you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to tune in next week. Same Ox time, same Ox channel for Scotch and Smoke Rings. I was supposed to uh, end the program about 40 minutes ago so I could get some sleep, but I didn't because I wanted to finish Max's story. Go to Alan's room, says Michael Irvin. I'll have to do that next week. We'll go to Alan's room and uh, continue with the plot next week. For tomorrow, I will be doing some Sherlock Holmes. I'm hoping to get up at a reasonable hour so we can do a early morning live stream at 10 o'clock. But knowing me, I'll probably sleep till noon. Ah, uh, you know, whatever. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned. Follow me on Twitter if you want to know when I'm going to go live. I'll let everybody know on Twitter, and then we'll do some Sherlock Holmes for the morning. For the weekend, I've got some lore videos on Fallout 76 Steel Dawn, the next chapter in the story. It's an interesting one. We finally get some 
Raider Combat, which is going to be some fun. And we get a brand new weapon, a really cool rocket launcher. You don't want to miss it on Saturday. But for the rest of the night, go to sleep, get some shut eye, and I'll see you bright and early with a new live stream. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. Bye-bye.